ready? There being a quorum present, the uh, June 10th meeting of the Historic Landmarks Commission will come to order. The first item under general business is public comment, a time reserved from for any member of the public that wishes to speak on something not on today's agenda may do so at this time. Anyone care to speak? Seeing no one, uh, the next item is the approval of the minutes for the HLC meeting of May 27th. Is there a motion and a second for approval of those minutes? Second. Are there any corrections or additions to the minutes? Mr. Schallenbarger. What page? Comments. It seems that the report is missing a, uh, or the sorry, the minutes are missing the statement that the staff had actually accepted the report, or was uh, in f was recommending that that the commission accept the report. Um, I think that should be reflected in the minutes. No, the report wasn't accepted. I understand it was that, not but accepted. but staff recommended that it was Melissa. So, Ms. Hetrick su suggested that if the commission agrees with the report, it, no, that, that the commission could accept the report. No, I know. So you, I mean, so you just want to add a statement that the staff had recommended. Staff, staff was okay with the report. The report. Yes. When, um, actually, this part of staff wasn't. So uh, you were. She was actually. Um, the, she's the city's environmental analyst, okay. and so if you want to submit uh, substitutes, environmental analyst yes. uh, recommended approval of the report. That would be fine. It's, it's just it's relevant to the minutes. The environmental analyst had recommended accepting the report. Yeah, I, I, I have no problem with that. We just don't want to use staff in general because I was. That's what I meant by the way, Melissa. Okay, so you would like to add that uh, the environmental analyst uh, recommended approval of the report even though the city historian did not. And you might as well add both if you're going to add one. Well, Our there seems, well, um, Ms. Feliciano listens to the tape and she does not recall that that was stated. So, and I can't, we can't change the minutes. We can't add something that Correct. wasn't said. So. She could listen again, and um, we could. Um, we've, we've had this discussion before, where if things aren't clearly mentioned, they shouldn't be reflected as minutes. So that uh, the tape will tell all. So we really, Jake. As as I remember it, um, because because the the issue was um, revolving around Sequa, that's why Melissa was invited to. To speak, uh, she was at my my station, and I was in the audience. So I never really actually came out and said, you know, staff's opinion as whether we re recommended approval or, or disapproval of the report. Uh, just simply that uh, the uh, the environmental, um, or excuse me, the uh, histori the historian had um, made some updates to the report per your request. Whether you accepted those or not, that was, you know, what, what took place later. But essentially, uh, I think that Susan's right that. Because it wasn't—it wasn't like a formal statement where I got up and said, "Well, this you know, staff doesn't uh, necessarily approve with this or that issue of the report." Um, but it would be a correct statement because Melissa was here and did say, you know, as an environmental analyst, she recommended uh, that the report uh, can be approved because it meets, I guess, whatever less secret. Than She's the findings are less than significant. So that would—that would be the way you would—you would need to attack that because we, like Susan says, we can't. Even though sometimes there's intent or there's an understanding, you know, maybe you have uh, an understanding, but if it's not actually said at the meeting, it's kind of hard to put it into the minutes and, and make it stick. Okay. I'll withdraw. Are there any other corrections or additions to the minutes? 
Mr. Drury. On, on that same subject, um, page six, it's the motion, the, the second part of the motion. Um, policy findings will affect future thinking related to view blockage and spatial relationship, which, which do not affect the approval or disapproval of this report. Is that, it sounds comp, unnecessarily complicated. It's like, does that make sense? I'm sorry, you said page six, but are you it's, on seven? It's same. Are you on page seven? Uh, it's, oh, no, six. item six. Oh, page six, I'm sorry. Um, and on the motion of uh, item three, it's the second part of the motion. It's just, it seven. doesn't. Well, it's page seven. Um, page. I'm on page seven. It's okay, well, anyways, the bottom of that, of the. Of well, I just want to make sure we're looking at the same document. Right, yes. Are part of the motion page on page seven. Correct. It's item two of the motion. There, item okay, two. policy findings. I just didn't want to have you, me looking at a different document than what you're looking at. Okay. You can't have that. Well, see, no, we can't. <laughs> well, I just, I, um, I don't recall that as being part of the motion. Um, maybe, maybe it was in, in, yeah. in a. Um, Ms. Feliciano would like to respond to that. So when I did the, the statement, actually, it wasn't from the conversations. It was from Ms. Naylor's chair's uh, summary. So this is what she said, almost word for word. Okay, so if, if she did if say it, that, if everybody's happy She's with right. that, then I, I will be too. I mean, these are minutes, and yeah. Yeah. that so, reflects. Okay. So that being said, while we're on this subject, can we add a S to the word relationship? Yeah. It should be relationships. Minor comment. Yes. Thank you. Are there any other corrections or additions to the minutes? All in favor of the minutes as amended say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Minutes approved. Next item of business is the consent calendar. Susan? Mr. Chair, item A, 27 Parker Way, was final approval as noted. Item B, 1221 State Street, was final approval as submitted. Item C, 916 State Street, was final approval as noted. Item D, 625 Chapala Street, was final approval as submitted. Item E, 1727 Prospect Avenue, was final approval as submitted. And item F, 2300 Garden Street, was final approval as submitted. And those were reviewed by Chair Sharp. Is there a motion to ratify the consent calendar? Is there a second? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Consent calendar ratified. I would like to abstain with respect to two items. Uh, Adams B and C. All right. Item D of general business are the announcements, uh, requests for continuances, withdrawals, and agenda changes, and so forth. Susan? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, Chair Naylor and Commissioner Murray will be absent today, and Commissioner Pujo will be arriving around 2 30. It's the only announcement I have. Are there any other? Announcements, Mr. Shaw, Mr. Gurry. Way we could make a, a statement concerning um, Miss Cole's loss of her son. Just expressing our condolences as a commission in the minutes. Is I mean, is that allowable? we can adjourn the meeting uh, in honor of uh, her loss? Please let's. Yeah, she's really suffered. So I'd like to recommend that. I think that would be appropriate. To, very appropriate under the circumstances. Any other announcements? Are there any subcommittee reports? Oh, Jake, I'm sorry. Just a quick announcement. Then. Just to remind you that uh, next, uh, next uh, meeting, we will be hearing um, two items that are, that are um, not the norm. We're going to be doing a structure merit designation request for 1809 standard. 1809 Stanwood Drive, and we're going to be doing a potentialist update. Uh, what we've been doing is working uh, about a year ago, if you remember, I brought the potentialist to you, and we removed about 40 or so buildings that we determined were either uh, altered beyond, um, beyond their original condition, were, were actually designated either structure merit or landmarks, so they were moved off the list, or that were put on an error. This part of the update includes adding some um, buildings to the list, and what they are is uh, buildings that were found by structures reports, 
to be either structured merit or landmark worthy. And um, I will be, in your next packet, you'll receive the, uh, the forms that will show which properties they are. Uh, I had hoped to have those ready for you today, but it's been a long and arduous task getting them done. So you'll have them uh, in your next packet. With that, Mr. Chair, I pass it back to you. Okay, thank you. Are there any subcommittee reports? Yes, ma'am. Do, do you want to report on it? Or? <laughs> Ms. Boucher. Well, Jake and I met this morning on the survey subcommittee and discussed what he has just been mentioned. All right. So it could be said we had a HLC subcommit meeting. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. If there are any uh, ordinance violations that anyone knows of, uh, staff does have the appropriate slips to fill out. I would like to just make a quick statement before we get into the regular agenda that last week we looked at a uh, several gates on State Street, and I had uh, – made the comment that I thought that the base should be increased by several inches, and I thought that would be something that could be just done on the drawing right then and there and get approval. It got by me, and I guess I wasn't paying attention, but it got put over onto the consent calendar for and a two-week delay on behalf of the uh, applicant, and I felt that I feel bad that uh, such a minor little... Uh, correction or, or addition to the drawing could have been made right then and there, and I didn't catch the fact that it was uh, going on to consent and wasting two weeks. So I want to apologize to the applicant that uh, that happened, uh, just happened. I'm sorry. Okay, the first item on the regular agenda is an archaeological report for 314 East Padre Street. So, Mr. Chair, mm -hmm. Dr. Glassall reviewed the report and concluded uh, that the archaeological investigation supports the report's conclusions and recommendations that because no cultural resource site or material is likely to be located within the proposed area of potential effect, then no further archaeological work is recommended or necessary at this time. Thank you. <clears throat> is there any discussion or a motion? Yeah. <clears throat> Well, I just can I just bring up a point, Robert? That this is awfully close to the mission. However, I read read the report. And it looks like they went through their uh, typical uh, 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 survey, uh, but it is awfully, awfully close to the mission grounds. That's all I wanted to say, Mr. Chair. There will be. Um there is a condition, it's a standard condition regarding the discovery of unanticipated archaeological resources that will be on the drawings prior to issuance of building permit. So if they do find something, everything will stop. Ms. Lowenthal, do you uh, have any Mr. Comment? Chair, as the agent from Harrison Design Associates, I assure this commission nothing will occur should something be discovered on this site. It would be the last thing our client would want to have happen, nor would we. So please rest assured we are bringing in every, every, professional that we need on this project. Well, I think from the neighboring property and having gone through this, we certainly understand. And if there's an overboard uh, situation here, this is it. That's absolutely true. <laughs> so. so, Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to accept the report. And I'll second. <laughs> I have discussion. One question on discussion. Uh, I uh, walk by this property fairly frequently, and I have noticed that the property has already, the garden area has already been cleared and At 2050. Uh, scraped. Mm -hmm. And in fact, there's also some deposit of fill material on a portion of the site. And I was wondering, is that allowed before the acceptance of the. Uh, I'll let Ms. Lowen the lines for that. I believe that's part of the 2050 property where that's occurred um, on the driveway area. And there were some trees along the back property line that were thinned out and um, discussed with the neighbor about creating a little better screening back there. Um, and then I, the house has been um, checked for different asbestos and other things that they're needing to take great care in removing it. We discovered asbestos there and items like that. So um, well, I'm pretty I don't sure, think any... No, I'm pretty sure. I, I looked just last evening uh -huh. that the scraping uh, occurred all the way up to the residence on this particular on property, and the fill material is also 
almost up to uh, the residents mm -hmm. here. The last time I looked, on, the on film this. material was on the driveway of 2050, so mm -hmm. I can definitely check into that. Uh, uh, yeah, so... Uh, probably a good idea, if you would. Yes, I'd be happy to. Yes, Commissioner Sharp is correct. I looked at it this afternoon again, and, and there's a huge pile of film material right up against the excavated wall of the, of the front porch of that cement area. And uh, I mean, I don't know what was planted there before, but it's, there's no way to find out. Certainly, it's just dirt. Uh, there wasn't anything planted. I've, it was, if it's gone, it was a um, old flagstone patio. On, the, on that level, uh -huh. lower level? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lowenthal. I'll double check with Gibson and contractors on Good, thank you. <clears throat> Was there a second to Ms. Boucher's motion? Yes, yeah. I second. Adams, any further discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Approval of the report. The next item is a historic structures report for 314 East Padre Street. Jake? Yes, Mr. Chair. Well, let's get these guys get it settled real quick. And if the consultants would say their name for the record once you get seated. Harrison Design Associates. Uh, Pamela Post, uh, Post Hazel Town Associates. <laughs> Tim Hazel Tine, Post Hazel Tine Associates. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Chair. Jake. We we're talking about the same property we were just referring to with the ARC report. This is 314 East Padre Street, which is directly behind 2050 Garden Street. That's the fifth Crocker Row house, which is currently being renovated. Uh, as, as another project. And what this report is about is that um, the owner of that, uh, the Crocker Row House, purchased the property behind it and intends to restore the size of the lot to the original configuration that it was. At, at one point, according, as you can read in the report, the lot was subdivided and another house was built behind it. So they did their analysis of the house that was built on the property and then analyzed the proposed project. I just want to point out one interesting uh, factor about this project is that we've got a very traditional uh, project, but they've managed to work in a solar component uh, in such a way that um, it's not visible from any public right away. So I just want to applaud them for that. I think that's uh, the way to do it. And uh, with that, Mr. Chair, uh, Steph has read the report and recommends uh, approval of the report, and I will turn it over to you for your discussion. Thank you. Do you have anything further to say as the report preparer? Uh, we're just open for questions you may have right. in regard to that, but I was tempted yeah. to add something. Just that, um, as explained in the report, the existing building was built sometime in the early 20th century and then went a fairly significant series of alterations beginning in the 1940s, late 40s. Um, it doesn't have a direct association with the Crocker family or Crocker Row for the period of significance, which ends in 1905 when the Crocker family sold Crocker Row. So the report's supportive of the demolition of the building um, because it doesn't have significant historic associations or um, neither does it represent a significant example of its architectural type. Um, Robert? I just wanted to ask a question. Um, so, reading the report, this was part of some olive groves and that's the that's from the historical records that exist, and really, they're a little spotty. There are there's a map that was drawn in um, the early 1850s, and um, that was because the American government was in the process of returning some of the church lands to the Catholic Church at each of the missions. And so there were surveys done, and it does show that that area at one time was part of an orchard. At least it's depicted as such on that map. Um, however, there, uh, from um, my remembrance, um, there's not any standing remains from those 
orchards except on Plaza Rubio where one of the houses has an adobe wall in the backyard. It's a fragment, but that may be an, a fragment of one of the adobe walls or stone walls that surrounded uh, these uh, cultivated fields. But, but to my understanding, that is the only standing remnant with the exception of the aqueduct lines of which there are fragments that are fairly well known in, in the area, but not anywhere close to this property. Thank you. Are there any questions, comments from members of the commission? Uh, I just, um, is there any possibility that there's good wood in that house? I, I looked at it a couple mm -hmm. times, and it, it's, if there is any, it's be hard to find perhaps, but is there any interior details that could be saved or not really it was built as a garage or as a um, carriage house it's mm -hmm. difficult to say because there's not a lot of records about it yeah. um, so given the time that it was built it was probably the original part of it is most likely built of true dimensional lumber um, but I think that'd be something maybe that Barbara could speak to as far as salvaging um, I'm happy to we've gone through the house with um, several people that we thought might be interested and so far we've been able to salvage the front doors for reuse um, some of the wood wood flooring from one of the back rooms um, however there were other materials in the house that were just deteriorated beyond any hope of reuse and then we discovered some not very much but some limited amounts of asbestos in some other areas that precluded us from then allowing those to be reused but we were able to reuse as I said or we plan to they haven't gone away yet the front door and then some wood flooring from inside right. one of the rooms. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? I, just, I think it's a very thorough report and I agree with the conclusions I think that are stated in the, um, in the report. Uh, I did have a question for staff though and, and I presume that the project itself will come before the board at some point in the future? Uh, it's on next on the agenda. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Close to follow. It's soon to follow. Okay. <laughs> because I, I did have a comment on the, uh, the project or a question about the project. We have received a request to speak form from Killam to Forest, of all people. <laughs> Killam to Forest, I just have a quick question. Uh, as far as you can ascertain the, and it isn't clear, f or at least from skimming the report, is any of the facade of the building that of the uh, carriage house, or has it all been covered over with uh, new construction in in the after World War II? Thank you. It's. Uh, can we answer that? Yeah. Directly. Yeah. Tim. Oh. Yeah. It's. Oh, you want okay. to you can go. Well, no, I was going to say that uh, that from our documentation in research and the building initially, as Tim said, started off probably as some sort of a storage for a carriage or, you know, perhaps an even early garage because we don't know exactly it was built somewhere between the early decade of the 20th century and 1930. And, and the additions that, that um, then were made to it over the years, the most substantial were made in 1947 when it was um, definitively made into a residence and that time of course additions were, were made that made it more in keeping with a, a residence and so that's you know see the doors and windows that you see now you know are, were all additions that were, were done uh, at that time when they even though some of the materials are older, the yeah. Victorian era door, right. and even the bay windows might have been yeah, might have been like found from another building. Yeah, exactly, yeah. But, um, but those are all put in place at that time, in the late time. 40s. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to accept the report second. with the comment that it's an excellent report. Oh, thank you. I second the motion. Motion second. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And thank you. Historic Construction Report's approved. Thank you, guys.
next item on the agenda is a conceptual review of the uh, same address, 314 East Padre. Does staff have any comments? Now, um, I know the project needs some mods. I think they're all things that you would be able to look at and, and um, support. Not today, sorry, Mr. Chair. This is simply the demolition ah. of the house I'm that follows a with your idea, acceptance sorry. of the two reports. You just saw this is not a review of the project. Uh, we have so many, sorry. many <laughs> modifications um, in trying to restore this property back to what it was originally that we need to um, work with the staff and apply for and come back to you with the entire project. This is to allow us, since you have approved the two reports ahead of us, to demolish the house so that we may put a very secure structure, be a trailer. We've removed everything from 2050 that is of value to the house, every inch of it that we have cataloged and we need to have a safe and clean place to store it because we are reincorporating it into the house. Okay. I, uh, Mr. Chair, Louise. I have a question. I'm not sure that I that I can go very far with this sandbag barrier detail. Well, I've never seen one before, it's so not it's very all Hispanic. new to me. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, it won't be there very long. Um, to give you an idea of how this project will develop as we move along, and, and the owner's intent is um, it will not be back looking new, as if. Uh, all the sandstone curb will not be new sandstone curb brought in. It will be the sandstone that you see on the property. Um, her intent is for it to look as if it went untouched. Um, so uh, that's the reason for needing to protect all of the interior materials and some of the exterior materials that we removed, and that's why we need this to happen. So that right now we have it in the garage, and it's just not safe, and it's also not clean. Um, and we don't want to lose any of those details. But you, don't worry, Louise. Chris Kimple is working hard away to make it look good. Thank you. Is there anyone <laughs> in the public wishing to address this project, this request? Hearing none, seeing none, I'll return it to the commission for uh, comments. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to make an early comment. It's ba kind of based on all this material that we've reviewed. And um, <clears throat> I, uh, I'm just going to say that the landscape architect and the client and the team should uh, uh, think about incorporating some olives into this project. I don't know if there's room or not, but I'm just going to throw the comment your way. Mr. Chair? Um, I will inform you that we are boxing the existing mm -hmm. olives on the site and storing them Great. for reuse. Okay. Reincorporation into the project. Okay. I was just. Okay. That's okay. I, I, I misunderstood Commissioner Adams' comment. I did, this I'm is, just this saying. This actual application is just the to demolish. So, okay. I'm yeah. just making a off the cuff comment okay. then, okay. about Don't the worry. project in general, not about anything specific. I know, but the co the comments that you make are going under this application. So okay, if you I refer strike to them, the comment. Well, no, I'm I'm just explaining to you. If you want to go back and read those comments later, it might be in the wrong spot. It probably yeah. would be. So I strike the comment. Sorry. I don't think we have to put it into the. <laughs> That's okay. I don't like that detail either. Are there any other comments? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve the project as submitted. Sorry, Thank you, Mr. Peugeot. Second by Mr. Drury. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Project approved. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Our next agenda item is number four, Historic Structures Report for 631 Olive Street.
Jake, do you have any comments? Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, this little house uh, came before us for a request to do some alterations and the change of use. And the reason I asked for the report is when I went out and visited this house, this, this house has been the subject of a couple site visits. I've had previous inquiries to people. People wanted to know what they might be able to do or not do with the house. And last time I had gone out and looked at it prior to this report, it had a porch on it, much like you see in Figure 10. Um, and the porch had been removed. The house has very wide board siding. Uh, it's got uh, very high plate heights, um, the distance between the top of the sills and, and the eaves. So, it, And it's got that sort of uh, shadow house or salt box shape to it. So it, it definitely warranted some investigation. Uh, Post Hazel Time did a, a very thorough job in trying to dig up what they could on this particular house and uh, made the determination that it's not historically significant. It was moved onto the site, which tends to diminish some of the significance. It's in a very deteriorated historic setting, meaning pretty much everything around it has been altered, and the building itself has been altered. And uh, I don't I guess I'm taking away St uh, Tim's thunder. So with that, I will say that staff's read the report. Um, and although I always hate to lose a building, this one is, I believe that the report is correct and that it is not historically significant. And uh, with that, Mr. Chair, I turn it over to you for your discussion. Thank you. Does the applicant wish to make a statement at this point? Um, I, I am the uh, owner. Why don't you come forward? Hello. Have a seat. And Thank you. I'm the owner. Introduce yourself. I'm Carl record. Lindbergh. I own the owner of the property. Thank you. And um, um, I, I was, there was some confusion about the uh, not being a significant structure in the past when we had looked at modifications we might do to the back and then um, so I, I, I crossed the line I tore the porch off thinking it was uh, not significant Ac actually access the parking which is one of the requirements we're going to do in the upgrade and so that's why we're here um, I, I did have one question though um, they, they referred to it I think as a national folk style or federal folk style national folk, national folk and the, um, there was reference to the um, uh, existing door uh, that, that was there. That was, it's a more modern door. Um, but I was wondering if I, you know, what what that door might look like. What a national folk might it might have been a, a simple six-panel door. National folk style is a very it's a Victorian era building that has very little embellishment. Mm -hmm. uh, it's likely that the porch had, you know, the porch that's in the, in the figure I think number ten is probably not the original porch to the house. The original porch probably had just a little bit more um, spindle work to it, not a, not, a, mm -hmm. not gobs of it like you find in a typical Victorian era building, but just probably a little bit more decorative uh, feature to it. And uh, you know, the building's just was made of very simple materials of the time. It had the wide board novelty siding, and um, the door that's on there currently is an off-the-shelf Home Depot door. Yeah. And this yeah. probably had an off-the-shelf made in San Francisco by hand door, but it would have been a simple door. It would have simply maybe a four or six panel. Four or six panel door. Or okay. door, yeah. Okay. And the house does have, appear to have its original windows. It's got the lugs on the windows. and yes. you know, They're simple one over ones. Uh, now, one over one window at the time that that house was built was, was a luxury, you know, to have the large panes of glass. So it's unusual to see, you know, such a simple house with one over ones. Usually they would have been two over twos. But it's possible that maybe when the house was moved, even the windows might have been replaced with something more modern. It's hard to say. Yeah. The house had just enough interest that I felt it needed a report just to make sure. And there was an eight-foot addition. It was called out in the report that it may have been widened, and you can see that in the and look very closely at the outside and then more obviously inside. But that was my comment. Okay, thank you. Any other public comment? Return it back to the commission for questions. Craig. Am I correct in reading the report? There, there aren't any recommendations. No. Okay. okay. Yes, because we did not find it significant. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yes, Commissioner Sharp. Sure. So, um, it's fair to say that, as I read the report, that it's going to look this way anyway. It, it's not going to change. In my understanding, looking at it from the street, it's going to have that rather simple. Um, 
architecture yes. is fairly harmonious with yes, Olive no, Street. No changes to it. And, and then the other question is, what happened to the porch? Um, the porch, it was, uh, I, I put it on some years ago. It, pieces of it are still around. Oh, you, you, you added the porch? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it, was, you know, it wasn't part of okay. connectors. And, All right. You know, right. 18, I think. Uh, yeah, there's no, footage of it uh, in the backyard. Yes. Still, I saw that. I saw that. All right, thank you. Please. Uh, I think my question is really more about the project than about uh, your report. But the photos show that there is, uh, for example, in the in the rear, uh, an outdoor washer dryer machine, and that's all shown in the proposed site plan. So I, my question is: Is that proposed to be a continued uh, outdoor use? Yeah. That um. Yeah. It's shown in the, the site plan, which is figure three, and also in uh, one of the... Uh, yes, that, that's there. And uh, figure 14, I think, also shows uh, in a photographic form. Uh, yeah. Yes, next to the water heater, which is also out there. Oh, okay. it shows so those are not going to be modified, and in, in you're not proposing any... Mm -hmm. It'll be screened. It, it will be screened. There'll be a rear yard, which will be uh, enclosed. That, that will be enclosed, yes. so those machines... Mr. Chair, we're, we're really okay. getting beyond the, the purview of the, of the question here is, is whether or not to accept the report. Um, if, the building resign, if the building project requires any design review, it will be done by a different board because it's, we found that it's not to Correct. be historic. Sir. Your only decision right now, do you agree with the report that the building is not historically significant? And if you do, then uh, it will go, it'll go its merry way down its path. Okay. Hey, uh, All right, but, Craig. I'm just comparing figures eight and ten. I'm wondering if there's any significance to this little, this low little. Uh, I'm assuming it's a concrete curb wall with the um, pedestal sort of uh, entry oh, there. Yeah, um, along the sidewalk. Is, is that gone now in favor of this? I mean, it looks like it's still there in figure I think, eight. I think actually it's still there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That seems to be some characteristic of, of the area and the neighborhood and. I don't know. Was that studied at all? Uh, we didn't study that in particular no. because. Um, Speak into the mic. Oh, sorry. Uh, we probably would have, um, if we'd found the house to be historically significant, we would have devoted more attention to that. Um, if you look on that block, not every house has one of those curbs, and it was probably an owner improvement. So if you're looking at a significant historic streetscape, right. you might be looking at individual elements that in and of themselves are not significant, but as a totality could be. But in this case, um, the report determined that there's not a historic streetscape because so many of the buildings on the street have been either altered or demolished. Right. So minor elements of that sort wouldn't be eligible to a contributor. They wouldn't be a contributor to a historic landscape. Yeah. If you look at figure four and five, you can get an idea what Tim's talking about, the altered streetscape. The historic setting has been pretty well deteriorated. Yeah, concern yeah, that we are, we are dealing just with the report, and this uh, project will be reviewed probably by the architectural board review because of the change of views. Uh, I think this report is just fine, and I will I make a motion to approve the report as submitted. Thank no, you, second. Alex. Motion second for approval of the report as submitted. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Report approved. Thank you, Mr. Lindbergh. Thank you. Item number five is an historic structures report for 309 East Canyon Perdido. Jake. Yes, Mr. Chair. We've got some uh, different person. Uh, if you would identify yourself for the record, sir. My name is Lang Sly. My wife and I are prospective purchasers of this property, and uh, we're the applicant behind the applicants that are listed here. All right. Okay. Thank you. At last we meet, we've been on phone contact quite a bit. Uh, Mr. Chair, this, uh, this house was one that uh, came before me. It, it's come up for sale, so I had a number of phone calls regarding oh, it. And, that's cool. and uh, this gentleman is one of the people that's interested in possibly purchasing the, the property. 
Uh, the question that co often comes up is what can I do with the property? Uh, they don't necessarily have a proposal yet, so the proposal is simply to um, make a determination as to whether the house has historic significance. Um, as you can see, the house uh, has an un unusual shape to it, and it's, you know, it's got that turn-of-the-century uh, feeling to the architecture in general, and then all of a sudden you've got these uh, tapered craftsman columns, which indicates that the house has had some alterations. And um, I will allow for Sazel time if, if you're interested in knowing about the alterations to the house, they can detail it for you. But this is another one where you know, I looked at the house, I said, we, we better just have a structure support and make sure. This, in this case, again, the report came back negative for the house being mm -hmm. um, it came structure, back structure of merit. Structure of merit but it's, it's sort of a minor, uh, minor structure of merit. It's, it's one where the setting could go either way. That um, Because of, if you, and I don't know if there's how accurate. If you go and visit it, you can get the feeling of what I'm talking about. There's enough uh, Spanish colonial architecture adjacent to it that it, a, a proposed project could go in that direction. Or if it were decided that this house were significant, you could save this house as you know maybe the front part of a project and build a project behind it. There's, there are a lot of options available, but, but we're here to approve uh, is the report, which is to make the determination that the house is structure of merit worthy. And with that, Mr. Chair, I turn it over to you for your discussion. Thank you, Jake. Are there any members of the public that wish to comment on this? Mr. DeForest. Thank you. Have a seat. I just, the statement here in Project 5, item 5 says, structural structures report for a proposed demolish of a single family residence. I, and this comes up from time to time, but rarely, that we have a project that where a structure is slated for demolition without any idea of what's going in its place. And I think that's a dangerous precedent. And I so I, that is my comment, that I don't think things should be approved until we know what is going. I know that this is not the demolition request, but I don't think that path should be followed. Thank you. Thank you, Killam. Are there any other members of the public wishing to discuss this? Bring you back to the commission. Jake, do you have uh, any comments on that? Well, we had some discussion on this. I know that the commission doesn't like to see proposals which are strictly demolished. That's why when we had the project description and the uh, report changed to indicate that uh, the purpose of this historic structure sites report is to provide the applicant with a determination as to the historic significance of the property at 309 East Cannon Berdito Street under the guidelines established in the city of Santa Barbara MEA. Um, unfortunately, it would be my error. I didn't change the uh, description of the report. One possibility is that you know, this owner, potential owner, or another potential owner may want to demolish that building, and that's something we'll have to deal with in the future. But this report, what we're determining here today is, is, the, is do you agree with the report that it's structure of merit worthy? Um, do you think that it's greater than a structure of merit, which I, I would think would be hard to get to, or do you disagree with the report and believe that the building is not historically significant? That's the determination that we're making today. So we just need to, if you accept the report, you're accepting that the building is structure merit worthy, and then any proposed changes would, would be another project that would come in. This is similar to how we used to do in old phase one and phase two. Uh, we used to have a, uh, a phase one report which just made the determination as to whether we were dealing with an historic building. Then the phase two looked at the project proposal, which was either demolition, remodel, or, or whatever, and, and analyzed that in terms of how it would affect the, the uh, historic resource. We had gotten away from that and gotten into this more one-step report that, we, that we're more accustomed to, which is the whole report put together. But occasionally we will get reports like this where we've got an applicant that's interested in a building and just wants to know, you know what, whether they're dealing with an historic resource or not before they invest in, uh, in purchasing the building. Thank you. Do the There's report writers have anything to <laughs> yeah. comment A little bit. On? <laughs> If, if you um, had a chance, I mean, if you saw section 10.4, it does include, um, which is called project impacts. 
It basically presents a scenario um, that could, a scenario if demolition was a, a part of a future project, and that was in the report to give guidance to the applicant um, if that was contemplated. And so there is there is a discussion of that and an analysis of that at a very general level, of course, because there is not at this point a, a specific project. Um, and we do, um, if you look on page 27 under the indirect impacts, there's also a discussion and evaluation of the impacts of demolition on of this building on adjacent historic resources, which are listed in the report, such as the Codero Adobe, El Casario, et cetera. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Chair. Also, part of the issue that surrounds the, the hesitance on whether a project's demolition or not is that we don't want to see any more Carrillo Hotel projects where, you know, we lived with a hole in the ground on a main entrance to the city for, you know, God knows how many years, or like the Wonder Bread building down by the beach that they took down that, Mm -hmm. uh, anticipation of, of a development that hasn't occurred. So I understand the apprehension, but again, this this report, we're basically just looking at whether you agree or disagree with the House's structure of merit worthy, and then whether it becomes a project in the future, that'll be another issue. Correct. I think we all understand that. Craig? I have a question for Jake. Um, Jake, does acceptance of this report remove the, the property as remove its eligibility for listing as a structure of merit? No, because the, the report actually makes a conclusion that it's structure of merit eligible. Oh, I'm okay. <laughs> so we don't, essentially, yeah, it wouldn't, the only thing that would remove the eligibility is if ultimately there was a proposal of demolition with a project associated with it, obviously, if the building's gone, then the, the uh, eligibility would go with it. And at this point, we're just, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> the report makes a determination that the building is eligible for structure of merit listing. Thank you. Any other <clears throat> questions or comments? Uh, Alex. I have some comments. I, I agree with the, uh, with the comments made. I suggest that we drop the, uh, a proposal to demolish f from, the, uh, from the, um, uh, the listing of the project. Right? So it will be historic, personal exception, historic structure report for an existing single family residence, blah, blah, blah. And, um, in the summary and conclusions, um, I mean, I'm, I don't totally disagree, but it, that seems like uh, I, I would, if, if this project is proposed to be demolished, this house, you should come back here for a demolition permit. And I, I would like, as part of a larger development, and I would like the uh, conclusion not to be so specific. So because basically, if we accept the report, it just says that, well, we, the house can be demolished immediately and there will be no impacts other than photographing it. And um, I wonder if there's something that could be done on page 28 to make it not so straightforward, the, the future demolition of this place. Mr. Chair? Okay. Um, part one, in order to get to where you want to be in terms of you know, having a proposed project come back to this uh, commission, uh, you can make a motion at the end to have, because the bill, if you find, if you accept the report, report finds the building a structure merit worthy, then you can make a motion to have it placed on the potential list, potential historic structures list. And that's part of the, anything that's on the potential historic structures list, you get a chance to review the uh, proposal. Can I can you certainly comments? introduce yourself for the record. Okay, uh, again, Lang Slide. Uh, my wife and I have looked for a downtown property for longer than I'm willing to admit because we want something proximate to all the things we like about downtown Santa Barbara. Um, we would, uh, the house is habitable. We would live there part time for, you know, probably takes us a year and a half or two years to get a proposal and get it through the, the city's process, which we understand. Um, the house is uh, cobbled together, as you will read in the report, from a lot of different additions and some subtractions over the years. So um, it's, it's um, uh, you know, from a, from a habitable standpoint, it's not perfect. So we would, uh, at some future date, uh, we would not demolish it. Say we would live in it part time, but we would not demolish it until we had an approved project and we were ready to start construction. Uh, we understand all the things in the uh, El Pueblo Viejo district the, the architectural limitations and so forth, and we're certainly on board with that. Um, but, we, but we would eventually demolish the house, and I guess, you know, what we're here for is before we 
uh, spend a lot of money on this property. We would like to know that when we do get ready to come up with a proposal that uh, there is not, uh, the commission doesn't have some reason that they think uh, it could be a landmark or it could be any other reason where you would want to want to see it retained. I mean, we, we just don't want to get ourselves in that position. So and I realize it's a little awkward not having anything to, to say, okay, we're losing this, but we're getting this. But um, um, I can tell you that it would be uh, uh, two structures, uh, one, one, uh, b both of modest size. Um, I think we would uh, like to do it in two stories and, and, uh, and not three and uh, in, in uh, appropriate style. Um, but, you know, we, we just don't want to come back and find that, you know, oh, we like that facade or we like this or, or that, that, you know, we don't want to give you a demolition permit. That's, that's what we're trying to avoid by being here. Well, we all very much understand why you're here and your, the importance of today's deliberations. How best to assure you, I guess, is the question here. And uh, one way or the other. Well, I, I guess simply by, in my mind, by saying yes, we agree in analyzing this report that it's uh, eligible for structure of merit. Uh, we agree it's not a landmark, and we don't feel that there's anything. I mean, I, I'm not <laughs> trying no, to mention it, but, we, but we don't we don't think there's anything that would. Uh, uh, from from uh, looking at uh, this and accepting this report that would that would prevent uh, you demolishing at some future date if you come concurrently with a proposal that's acceptable to us. Something along those lines. Mr. Chair, Jake. Yeah, just just to clarify one issue that I'm probably not too clear on, or probably wasn't too clear on. If the, if this commission has an interest in saving this building. What it would require is that you would have to disagree with the report, and you'd have to come to the conclusion that it were landmark worthy. Um, the issue is is that you know in this case is it's structure merit. It's it's had a lot of alterations. It's cute. You know it's it's kind of like that situation where you've got a house that's cute and and you know people want want to retain it because it's got a nice uh, street uh, appearance to it. But the fact is is that we do allow with, with due process demolitions of structures of merit. Um, so the issue, if, if there was some strong sentiment that you wanted to save this house as an individual building, you'd have to disagree with the conclusions of the report and find yourself that it would be uh, structure merit, I mean, <coughs> landmark worthy, which I, I staff wouldn't uh, necessarily support. We don't believe that it, it makes that, uh, it, that it gets that high on the ladder. I'm going to try a motion to Ms. Boucher. accept the report. Motion is second to accept the report as submitted. Any uh, discussion? Yes. Mr. Drury. I, I guess the, the thing that got me right off that was demolish. It's a, you know, a terrible term in downtown Santa Barbara. Um, I've, I've, I know that street very well. Um, it's kind of a hodgepodge. The house is charming, but probably structurally a little suspect after all these years. And there's other, there's other houses along that, that side of Cana Perdido in that block that were there and are, are no longer there, that have been replaced with Spanish style that, that, that don't reflect the kind of clapboard style that there is a, there is a name for that style, I suspect, that, um, you know, the broad um, horizontal no, board. Hmm? Yeah. Is, is it? Type of siding type? Yeah. No. yeah. As Jake said, novelty, novelty siding. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I think that, uh, of course, I, it, it's difficult to want to see um, something remain that has a certain attraction in terms of how long it's been there, but it's also, um, uh, this is going to come before us, I suspect, if we re accept the report as, as my understanding. I just, I wish that, uh, maybe Commissioner Pujo uh, was suggesting the same thing. The idea of demolish is a, 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 a Mr. Chair? interesting word. Choice of words. Mr. Bougeau, well, the description is going to change, right? Right. That, yeah, and yes. I also need to I also need to clarify that you know this is in the EPV, so you're going to see whatever proposal proposal it is. Correct. And as I said before, I, I've been to the site, did an extensive site visit, and there is a as someone on the down the end of the table said, so there's a hodgepodge of architecture there. Mm -hmm. um, so if you were to imply to enforce the EPV guidelines fully on this, and it was to become a Spanish building, you could build something that would nest in. 
quite nicely without necessarily negatively impacting the other buildings. Uh, probably the most interesting building is the one on the corner, which is now the Legal Aid Center. It was the little general store, and that's a designated building. And fortunately, there's a, a parking area and, and, a, and a, a fairly wide lot between these two buildings. So that even if this building did get demolished and did go Hispanic, it wouldn't negatively, unless it were too big, but it, it wouldn't negatively, necessarily negatively impact that little building on the corner. And there are uh, historic buildings uh, behind it. There's an adobe behind it that you would have the ability, if you felt that this, whatever the proposed project was, negatively impacted that ad adobe, um, you would be able to have some comment on that. But there again, there's enough distance between the, 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 the buildings that I think that's not going to be an issue. So the thing to keep in mind is, do you, do you agree that it's structure merit worthy? Um, and do you, and you will have purview over any proposed project in the future that goes on that lot? That's why I made the motion to accept the report. Correct. We have a motion and a second to accept the report. Just, just one. Schallenberger. Maybe this should have gone under questions, but on page 28. Talk about the uh, setting of the Cordero going to be somewhat diminished by a, a removal of this, this structure. Not, that has a negative connotation to me. And I'm not uh, page sure. 28. Yeah, page 28, the top paragraph. I'm not sure that it would be diminished by the removal of the structure. It might even be enhanced. Well, well you know, go on, Pam. Pam? Yeah. Uh, the reason we made that comment is because the house has been in place since roughly somewhere between at least a portion of it between 1870 and 1878 so we're talking about not necessarily from an aesthetic you know stylistic standpoint but from an historic standpoint as a component of old spanish town okay, yeah. thank you mm -hmm. any other questions or comments yeah, I robert actually have one comment what did you think of the Sandstone walls. I mean, what what was your general in, in the back? Well, I, we were a little perplexed actually because they're a little oh, more substantial than you would usually find on a very modest house in old Spanish town. Most of its residents um, were very poor and very marginalized. Um, so it is interesting. We looked at all the sandborns going back to 1886, the Coast Survey maps going back to the 1850s. <laughs> Not that the wall would show up, but to see if there was a building behind it that mm -hmm. had some relationship to it. But that wall is parallel to the street grid, so definitely was built probably around the time. Of course, when the house was, it doesn't predate it. It, it would be most likely, if it predated it, that it would not follow the orthogonal street grid, which was you know, started to be put in in the eight, early 1850s. It could be that it allowed access up to the other Cordero adobe, which was sort of towards the center of the lot. And that building was demolished um, sometime, I think, between about 1924 or so and 1930 or so. So it may have allowed access to another building that just no longer exists and is not on this particular parcel now. The Cordero family, as outlined in the report, owned most of the block. And the families that actually owned this parcel were related to the Cadero, so at one time it was just a sort of a big family enclave, and so probably it was dated to that period. So I'm going to follow up with a comment, and that is there are some walls in back that are, have substantial, substantial sandstone blocks, and they really have a nice historic character. And I just want to. I just want to say that as a comment during this meeting. I'm not saying do anything with them. I'm just alerting the commission to the fact that there is a wall in back that has some seriously nice older flagstone. And, sandstone. Uh, sandstone. Sandstone. Uh, sandstone blocks. Uh, and uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an asset. Those materials are assets. What we often do at the staff level is when projects come in and we see the initial project, if I see these sandstone walls, I usually speak to the applicants about re uh, retaining them, if possible, or reusing the sandstone as part of the project. And uh, most people are very receptive to doing that because it, it is nice cut sandstone and it's, it would be expensive to replace, so they're usually glad to use it. Well, we do have a uh, motion and a second for approval of the report as submitted. All in favor of that motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Right. Thank report you. Report yeah. approved. Thank you all. Well, thank I'm you. I'm leaving now. <laughs> I am afraid so. <laughs> I don't either.
Our next item is number six, uh, another historic structures report for 2300 Garden Street. Hi, Alex. Hey, how are you? Fine. Alexandra Cole, preparer of the report. I just want to comment. I feel that probably this report will cause you less heartburn than my last report. <laughs> Thank you. We, uh, we would agree. Staff, you have yeah. any comments? Yeah, we've, I've reviewed the report. This is centering around a shop building, which is a, really a secondary structure on the site. Um, and it looks like the, the improvements that they want to make to it will actually be quite an improvement to the, to the building. And with that, uh, Mr. Chair, I turn it over to you for your consideration. And we have, we have the uh, report prepared if, if you have any specific questions. Thank you, Jake. Do you have anything further to add, Alex? No, I don't. Simply in the fact that these doors that are going to be replaced, I first thought were actual wood plank, which would appear that they would have been from the 1938. But these look like much more modern doors. That, I mean, they're, they're veneer doors. And so if, if you look on page 9 at a typical door, it's where the veneer is peeling off the bottom. And that kind of doorknob just makes them, I don't have any record for that, but it makes them seem as though they were all replacement anyway. And so um, I wasn't grieving over those as a particular important detail of the building. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone from the audience wish to comment on this report? Seeing none, we bring it back to the uh, commission for any questions. Straightforward. Seems so. Any uh, comments? Yes. Um, Robert? Okay. Um, I, I agree that the sandstone portion of the walkway into the building is in some disrepair. But man, what wonderful, warm material uh, that is. And um, I think that um that material adds some character uh, that type of material and and i know there may be reasons for replacing the sandstone but i'm saying there's something about that sandstone uses a walkway material that's valuable and um i think it i think it is for a historical feel and a historical character it 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 beats just flat concrete uh, scored in a pattern that matches the gym. And I just want to make that comment because I really like the material. I don't necessarily like how it's been unmaintained, but it really adds something to the whole look of this building. I like the unmaintained, the way you said that. Yeah. Yes, well, partly the, 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 I thank you for your comment. I appreciate it. The uh, kind of concrete that's going to be used is the kind that is on the gymnasium. Uh, which on all of those walkways, which were uh, slightly earlier period, and they're a very warm concrete, warm color, more like a sandstone color, which is why we went with that, and it makes it smoother for school use. Do you want to add anything? Yeah, I'm Mary Mary Rose. I'm an agent for the app for the applicant. Um, the reason for part of the reason for the change out is also for ADA compliance as a walkway. Sure. It's uh, yeah. you know it just makes it safer. So I understand the feelings there and we tried to match something. Any other comments? Miss sure. um, Cole, <laughs> is it possible that the sandstone can be saved and used, reused somewhere? Is it is it cut sandstone from some time ago? Be the building was done in 1938, so it's not like the wonderful cut sandstone walls that date from, say, 1899 mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and some of those that you see. It's a rougher, rougher joining? It's, well, it's really hard to tell because mm -hmm. the, it's, it's had these concrete overlays, pairs, so you yeah. can't really see underneath the sea, but they look very irregular. Page and 8 not, has a good photograph of it, so you can see what she's uh, talking about. On uh, page 8. It'd be nice if we could... If it could, somehow that stuff could be saved, seems like. Not that we lack for sandstone in Santa Barbara County, but still. Um, yeah, these repairs are horrendous. <laughs> yeah. 
This is a pour over, pour over method of repair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, in the spirit of what I was just talking about, where people have these things on the sites and they're usually glad to reuse them, uh, one possibility might be to take that sandstone out and build a student patio somewhere where they, you know, they can have an outdoor sitting area and reuse that sandstone so that it stays on the site. It may not be in its exact location, but it would stay on the site. Just a food for thought. I would think it's appropriate for us to recommend that you consider, strongly consider reusing this in some mm -hmm. yeah. decorative I, or reasonable fashion. I think if it's a request, we can convey that request. Um, I'm a little concerned about it being a patio because, again, the roughness of the the, mm -hmm. the stone. But I think to ask that it be reused is, is reasonable, that, we cons that it be considered to be reused. We'll look at it. Yeah, it's going to have to be taken up and and. Um, I would I would totally agree with the reuse comment, but mm -hmm. you know I think it's it's a good plan what you mm -hmm. have with the uh, using it with the with the, with the applicant has a good plan of redoing that for better access. Yeah. But the reuse comment is is I'm t and totally I'm happy with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we can take that. That's a a request that we consider it, and I can certainly take that back. There's not a plan right now, but... I, I'd like to make make a motion to accept this report with the comment that, that we reuse, that the applicant uh, uh, reuse or store the, um, the, the better parts of the sandstone patio for future uh, uh, use. Is there a second to that motion? Under discussion, uh, we'll let Mr. DeForest chime in here. Sure. Thank you Killer. very much. Uh, c a couple of questions on the sandstone. Uh, I gather since this is a school and you probably have to be more uh, cognizant of the uh, ADA uh, requirements, the sandstone couldn't be saved under the uh, historic structures code, could it? Is my question, and how much? How much does the ADA demand uh, a completely smooth surface like concrete? I mean, what? What's? This looks pretty level to me. What? What's wrong with it? Thank you. Well, they're very specific, and being an architect, I would say unequivocally, this floor would not even come close to their requirements and their dimensional uh, tolerances that you have to stay within. So, uh, and it's been patched so many times that it's just going to be a nightmare continuously. It's better to do it right the first time and try and use this somewhere in some fashion that would be reminiscent of what's being left, taken out, I mean. Yeah, Mr. Chair. Jake? As you're saying, the city does oftentimes revert to the State Historic Building Code, which is what Callum was referring to. Um, but that's usually, the city uses that to lessen the standard for locational. Like if you've got an existing historic building and you need to provide access, they may be able to take access in a different way that would normally be approved under, under the stricter standards. But we've always required that the, the surface be smooth and that there be no more than a half inch you know, of bump ups. And so. Uh, I think that that's that, that would be the problem here is that it would not meet the, the ADI standards. Plus, the code really speaks more to aesthetic and and uh, tangible things rather than safety items that uh, can really cause. Yeah, they don't want to skimp on the safety, but they can skimp on some of the, the look of it and the design and the placement. Correct. We've had a motion and a second for approval of the report. Uh, any further? Comments or questions? All in favor of the uh, report say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, it's not on the agenda, Alex, but we all offer you our sympathy and condolences. In a time Thank like you. This. I really appreciate that. I really, really do. Alex, Thank we have a card for you. Thank you. I truly appreciate it. The one joy was that he'd come off a four-month sabbatical doing all the wild and wacky things he wanted to do, the travels, going to Easter Island, looking for rare birds in Madagascar, bungee jumping, whitewater <laughs> rafting in the Nile. He had just been with his brother, and so he left on a high note, and I appreciate your thought. Well, Thank you. We appreciate you, too.
Yeah, just no, I won't. I'll just oh, sit. Sorry. <laughs> and now we're on item number seven. We get down to some architectural issues finally here. The architectural issues on this particular building. Um, it is it's 2300 the, Garden Street. And right. would you reintroduce yourself for the record? I am Mary Rose. I am agent for the owner. Uh, George Machine, Machine and Associates, Architect of Record. Thank Why you. Why don't you say that again? Uh, George Machine, Machine and Associates, Architect of Record. Thank you. This is actually the specifics design of the, um, the shop that you just looked at. The shop building again is in the rear behind these buildings it is located here on the plans so what we are proposing to do this had been you've you've seen it before in a little bit of a different configuration and um, with some of the design changes and plans for use of the building have evolved this is looking more to be um, art student space than um, it was just classroom space before so there's some changes um, to some of the mechanical um, a kiln uh, vent and some things like that. So maybe we can switch quickly to. That's the demolition plan. You can keep flipping. Plan. There you go. It would be A101. This was this was an attachment to the report you just saw, so it's not. It's sort of new, but not really new. Um, the um, the change again that you looked at was the change of these doors from being flip up doors to being open doors, um, which you had approved a little bit one of those before, um, but now making those. So this would be a classroom. This would be a classroom, making more use of this space. Previously, there were some bathrooms here. This will be a kiln area that have access from both sides for safety, and uh, we've moved the bathrooms down to this to the center area. Um, again, the walkway here. Um, some of the doors would be fixed doors f to maintain the look that Alex was talking about. Um, but again, would be a um, so that's that's sort of a, a, a change here. The elevation you can see here. If you guys, you, you guys flipped them. So you were looking at the other one. You're looking at the elevation. So again. This is the back side, these, went, these doors that Alex was talking about, re replacing those to be doors that open out. The front facade would be maintained the way it is. Um, the, these are the doors that would open, and the others would be fixed in place. Um, the roof vents would allow for the kiln to um, discharge. This is the existing condition that you have there. Have some. And again, this is very much at the rear of the building. These are the sort of existing condition of the of the. Or that back side that would be being changed. Again, this is the very far side, you don't see it as, as part of these door changes, makes it a much more open, usable space for the, for the school. Okay, any uh, questions? questions? Yeah. Um, as a result of this project, is there any enhanced landscaping that's proposed for this little small building? In this area, no. It's, there's, his, there's landscaping, to the, there's parking to the rear. And there is landscaping in the front, which um, in one of your prior meetings a long time ago, you asked that that be be maintained. It's a couple of it's some fig trees that are not historic, but older fig trees on the front side of the building. I think if you look at the this is an oh, older shot, and it will be you know. There's some grapes down at one end, and it's it's been cleaned up a bit. But these were um, some of the the plants that have been maintained. Okay, thank you. Trying to, everything is being cleaned up landscape-wise, but there's no specific landscaping to this particular change. All right. Okay, thank you. Other than what you had seen here. It's really just Does any member of the public wish to comment at this time? Seeing none, we'll bring it back to the commission for any further questions. I have a quick question. 
Greg. And these uh, vent kiln stacks, is that, is that accurate? The, um, the height there, is, does that meet code clearances? Um, I'm just thinking proportionally. We we were having a bit of a difficulty getting uh, specifics from our manufacturer. The the kiln supplier and manufacturer um, is reluctant to provide us with the specific height requirements for that particular kiln. So um, I did the best I could. <laughs> we understand. Any other questions or comments? have one comment. Alex. It's just it's a design comment, not a historic comment. But it seems that um, uh, this door right here, it doesn't seem to match the other. These are probably seven foot doors, and this is six foot eight or something. It, I don't know if you are reusing it. I mean, it would make a lot more sense if they're all the same height. And I was looking at the floor plan, and it will, you know, it will not hurt that this one is different from that one. It's just a matter of design. Uh, design comment. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that I can fully comment on that since this was a, a design architect um, proposal in the rear. All I can say is that the the man size door, as opposed to the carriage size doors, they wanted the distinction. They wanted them to be noticed, noticed, as opposed to trying to match it. I do, I do, I should bring up one other point. These doors in the front. Um, four of them, the ones that open, are being widened just slightly so that um, for ADA access. So they'll be exactly the same look, but they are a little bit wider. Any other comments? Yeah, I want to make Robert? a comment. I, th I think um, I think on this side of the building in the planting bed. This side of the building in a planting bed, uh, I think uh, I would like to comment is to say add some kind of palm tree to that planting bed in front, not to hide it, landscape architect's choice. But I would like to see in addition of a palm tree, just that we have a bird of paradise down here that you're saving. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to see that balance. It could be a small palm tree, a phoenix robolinii, or uh, a, a blue palm or, or something on this side to balance that. As long as you're improving some of the outward appearance, I think uh, a landscape improvement should be included in a, a simple palm tree, I'd say a minimum 15 gallon size. Incorporate it into the bed toward the parking lot side. Would that be something that we would have to bring back to your commission, or can we have that as a note that we then, that can be your plan check? Mr. Chair? Yes. If, Susan? after your review, if you find that you could review this, you could ink it on, onto uh, the plan, and just say 15 gallon palm, palm uh, blue palm or whatever uh, yeah. on that elevation. And I'll let the land, you know. Yeah, and he can, he can, he can kind of decide where it fits, and then we're, and then we don't have to come back to you again and look at a palm tree. You want well, I'm sure I'll be back again. Yeah, we will. Okay. Mark it or not? <laughs> sure. I don't know if the rest of the commission agrees. But we'll be out in here somewhere. Mm -hmm. Fifteen gallon minimum. Minimum. Fifteen gallon minimum. Pump. Sometimes. Pump's yeah. Kind of 15 gallons. Okay. Any other comments? Yes. Um, I'd like to say this is a very handsome building. I, I like the way it looked before the renovations. I really like the way the back looks. I wish I had that as a studio space. It looks very, uh, <laughs> you know, it's uh, very well done, very well thought out. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to uh, for preliminary. No, this is review it's, after final. Review after, after final. This is final. And also to uh, carefully store the sand, the sandstone paver for future use. I'll for, for future use of another part of the site, and incorporate a minimum 15-gallon palm tree, and. Uh, 
motion to approve. I'll second that motion. Okay, we've had a motion and a second for a review after final approval with the addition of a minimum 15 gallon palm tree. And I believe that's it. And storage of the and sandstone. Storage of the, careful removal and storage of the existing sandstone. The, the usable walk. ones. Yes. Let's <laughs> not have to Correct. store all of the onions. So, yeah. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Project approved. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. That's the one that it's written on. Though. Yeah. No, no, no. That's the one. Oh, that's, that's the one. That's the one. Okay. okay. Well, I'll make sure you get the right one. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Item number eight is a final review for 418 State Street. Susan. Can you just Just for good luck, or what is this here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> burning incense. That's what I mean. I. Uh... <clears throat> good afternoon. Good afternoon. Is this working? Yes. Yeah. Your name, please. Oh, Howard Wittosh, architect. And uh, this is Krishan uh, Gupta. Gupta. He is the owner of India House, the tenant in the building. And he has brought today a sample of the light fixture that we would like to hang many for, of from the ceiling in the covered outdoor space in the front of the building. It should be in this area right here. Many meaning? Maybe a dozen. A dozen. A different sizes and shapes. They have light sources inside. They have openings in the skin, and they have uh, the, the uh, uh, glass uh, marbles actually are translucent. Would they be permanent or on display for sale? or yeah, they will be They'd permanent. be permanent. Permanent. Yeah. They are not the, uh, the lighting for the exterior lighting. They are just ornamental lights. We have recessed lighting in the ceiling. I believe we have like a ceiling plan here. A1. A1. These lights that he is holding are of this, of this kind, right here. The other two lights are recessed, uh, compact fluorescence, and they have a little detailed ring around them, which, are, which is shown right here. Uh, this is a, a, a plate steel, cut steel, um, iron trim. And it floats about an eighth of an inch above the plaster, and it is attached uh, to the ceiling. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay. So I have several items that we uh, changed since we uh, and added since we saw you. This uh, detail has been added. Uh, this uh, shows the detail of the um, plan at the arch, plan at the arch, and then this is plan at the column below the arch. This is a profile of the head where the frame is still in the wall and we have another detail on another sheet which shows what happens in between. We just had to do this because this is a final review. So here is again at larger scale the head between the steel frames and the head at the steel frame. And again these uh, were enlarged and these are now the uh, transom, I should say the door and transom details uh, of the storefront. The bollard, and here again is the little light trim, somehow got printed twice. Uh, we were asked to study the arches, and the arches are shown here. Uh, the previous arches were, small radius was 18 inches, the large radius was 39 feet. The proposed arch now has been enlarged so that this is 30 inches and this curve is 30 feet. So we were asked to soften this a little bit. It's difficult with the ratios, as you know, but we did that. We felt that just about made it 
appropriate. And you lowered we the capital asked, height. And we lowered to, the capital. Uh, yeah. yeah. Allow that to happen. And we also, um, where is that little drawing here? Wouldn't it, wouldn't you know it? The drawing. I did. We did a a, a, a rendering somewhere around here, and it shows that. Uh, just a second here. You know what? It'll turn up, but uh, it's around here somewhere. Here it is, right here. This is the latest illustration showing in which we made the elevations of these arches more like the illustration. Same illustration you Same had illustration. two weeks ago. Right. We were asked to move this frame up in order to enlarge the, the field around the arches. This presents a problem in that we end up having this molding in the middle of a concrete wall where the, there's a transition between concrete and wood where we need the molding. So rather than push that up, we added this element, which is a recessed uh, stucco panel to receive a sign above the arches. Uh, in the old country, this would be in uh, uh, Europe, Spain, wherever, you find in the old buildings that have been owned by the same family for generations, you find the name of the family or the name of the business in a sign on the building. So this is kind of drawn from that historical precedent. Um, we added, because of the, someone mentioned the idea of someone bumping their head on the lowered capitals, uh, we added pedestals here uh, in tile to match these pedestals that are on, on which the urns sit so that people do not, in fact, cannot, in fact, walk in the same place where the capital is, is lowered. Unless they trip and fall. Unless they trip and fall, right. Or their head is bigger than their feet. Or that, yeah. <laughs> or tall people, such as myself. However, uh, we have also hard. We did. We consulted hardware uh, of suppliers, and what we would like to do is say that the, the the door manufacturers that we have selected make hardware like this. This is a traditional handle with an escutcheon, and it will have a lock and uh, 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 in the in the plate. What material? What Oil rubbed bronze. It's going to be a dark finish. So we would, we'll probably have a plate either, it'll have this proportion, which is tall and narrow because these doors have uh, narrow uh, mullions. Uh, this is the type of handle. There'll be a lock down below. And this would be also the same type of handle that would be on the folding doors in the middle. So the exit doors and the folding doors are all going to get the same hardware. This hardware happens to be selected because it is also compatible with the panic hardware that needs to be on the inside. Panic hardware is going to be old style uh, rim device uh, that you just, no lock rail, just push it and the glass is around the other side. And we will have what they call a removable mullion, which is, divides the two doors. And that will be, a remo when they have large pieces that have to go in and out, that is removable. So that is our hardware. The light fixtures and trim, the pedestals, the added details. We believe this is a permit ready set. Uh, it's being plan checked as we speak as a courtesy because of the time frame. But you are welcome to go through each page just to see what's here and to. Uh, uh, this project is, in fact, a structural retrofit of, in fact, in which the trusses need to be strengthened. So the storefront is the part that you've seen that you're interested in. Uh, the part that the city is interested in is the, how the trusses are to be strengthened. And so for your interest, fascination, and other scrutiny, uh, there is, this is the, these are the planters. Uh, this is the, these are the details of the columns. This is a foundation plan. This is a uh, roof framing plan. And I believe uh, this, these are beam connections in the front. And these are truss repair details. And these are truss connections. 
and then this is the storefront with the new heightened arch and uh, the uh, column braces frames um, in the front, in the storefront. Could you explain to me one more time, you're, the molding you're talking about is, is probably low down here, uh, correct? If this is the right, actual, right this, this, it's right okay, there. Here it is. This is the top of the steel, this is the bottom of the steel, this is the bottom of the concrete lintel. Okay. So the molding is going to go probably right in here. These steel pieces, they are going to have to remove the concrete in order to get this a steel-to-steel -steel connection. And then this steel-to-steel -steel connection here alone is welded. Here it's bolted. Welded, welded, welded to the existing steel frame. It's complicated. I mean, but the change of material is occurs, down at this level, at this and that's level. why, rightly yes, so, yes, you should yes. have your trim at that point. Right, that's, okay. that is why. Good. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I believe, do I have anything else here? There, the sign, we would ask you not to take action on the sign. We would come before the sign committee with that. Uh, the proposal is to incise the letters into the stucco panel. And uh, we would have the letter sizes and strokes and all that style and so forth at that time. Uh, the concept, uh, we, would, we would like you to approve the concept of a sign panel as part of the <coughs> approval, if you can. And okay. the other thing about, the, uh, we did take this gentleman's suggestion about the tile arches. That's one of the things you'll see in the detail. The arches are no longer painted uh, stucco. They are tiled. And there is a question as to whether the we will use one-piece monochromatic tile to achieve these alternating patterns, or whether we will take lovely monochromatic tile and smash it into pieces and take a thousand little pieces and make a mosaic of, not a design mosaic, but a random mosaic uh, with an edge, a bullnose edge, and uh, make the colors, achieve the colors through a random, another, a random pattern within each color. We would like, we have proposed a color board, which I think you've seen. You've also seen the color of the urn and so forth. This is the color board. And while these are our are, are palette, the palette that we are proposing, uh, we will stay within this range, but we would like to be able to play a little bit with the colors when we get there. Still using, you know, a white body and some color trim and so forth. Nothing offensive will be done, I can assure you. Um, and that, that, I think, is, is concludes my okay, presentation. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions? Yeah. Craig? I'm sorry, Craig? Well, one question, Howard. Um, on the assigned um, plaster panel, there's no dimensions or, or it's not located. Is that just because you're not sure what it'll be in the final analysis? 20 inches high by 14 feet, and oh. it is centered. Um, right, up and down and, and that right, symmetrically. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yes, they are, they are 10 inches at the moment. They could be 8, but they're 10. Well, I'll but see that, you at time that, committee. Anyway. You will see us at time. <laughs> and so that, that uh, graphic there shows 10-inch letters. Mr. Adams, you had a question. Yeah, um, the, those ten lights that you said there might be twelve to twenty of them. Well, uh, there are. Yeah, the reflective seating plan shows two, four, eight, twelve max. Okay, so the, these are those the, are they. These are them. These circles yes. represented by these circles. So two, pretty much in a symmetrical arrangement, and. Um, when you hang those, uh, how visible are they from from the sidewalk? F fairly visible. Yes, they will be because this you see uh, the ceiling. This dotted line yeah. represents the ceiling. I see. And so this is a fixture. It's about 18 inches uh, when it hangs. So. So you'll see those uh, from the sidewalk. You'll see those in there. Given the ceiling, is there is there good proper clearance to walk under them without yeah, smashing your head. These are not, you know, the ceiling is 11 foot 9 inches. 11 foot 9. These are probably a foot and a half, so the bottom, the little the little point that would stab you is about 10 feet. I've been stabbed the, by yes, things yes, like I that. Yes, I have too, Robert. It's, yeah. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> uh, on that note, 
neighborhood of the, uh, the the fixtures. I no objection to them at all. But has the building department signed off? I'm thinking of UL listing. They will be UL listed yeah. or, or the equivalent of UL yeah. listing. Yes. Great. Yeah. We've down, not been down this path. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Well, yeah. Uh, and have you considered energy efficient light bulbs for those fixtures? For these fixtures? Yeah. Um, Since they're kind you know, of hidden. You know, this is the last bastion of the unregulated uh, areas. Uh, they, ornamental lights are not regulated, but in, in all due conscience, we probably will try to get energy efficient lamps in there. Thank you. Far be it for me for wasting energy. Commissioner Sharp, mm -hmm. I, I, just Mr. to comment Gura, on those lights you. and the points um, down, I think it would just depend on how rambunctious <laughs> one got on a particular night on State Street that it would pose a problem. <laughs> now, how one could jump. Thank you. <laughs> we'll post a sign, no jumping. Well, there will be just, tables and chairs out there, won't there? Yeah, they could climb up. So you don't tables. have to jump. You just get, climb on a chair and a table. Yeah. You're right there. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any members of the public wishing to comment on this project at this time? Seeing none. Uh, Mr. Chair. Back to the commission. Susan. Well, the comment on the fixture, the you know, the any fixture that's hung there. Is going to have to comply with the lighting ordinance. So yeah. just so that you've read that and get a copy of it, and okay. make All sure right. that that fixture will. Yeah, we. Because uh, I don't want you to get to the end and then find out, oh, it's not going to work. Yeah, we Thanks. will. We will follow that. Yeah, find out what that is. Okay, okay commissioners, comments. Mr. Drury, get my notebook. I think it's here. a well thought out and handsome project. I like the, the subtle changes that were made to the arches and. And um, I think it's very well done. It's going to be a nice addition, sort of a Moorish feel in Lower State Street. Mm -hmm. Good, thank you. Concur. I make a motion. Then. Final approval as submitted. Second. We've had a motion second for final approval as submitted. Uh, any other comments before we vote? I just have, uh, under the guidelines for the commission, I have to abstain since I was not present when the uh, preliminary approval was given. Okay. That's the nicest uh, comment anyone has said all day. <laughs> um, Mr. Chair? Kidding. Thanks a lot. Um, Mr. Chair, I just wanted to ask the applicant. Um, Mr. Wichtosh, are the specs for the lighting in the plans um, anywhere? Because no, they will be on the, on the, on the submittal. Okay, I mean, well, the specs, you mean the manufacturer and all that? Yeah, because this is the set that they compare the building yeah. permit submittal set with. So if there's nothing with lighting here, for all intents and purposes, you're going to get a plan check correction that says go back to HLC for approval of the lighting. Uh, because of the way in which this has been submitted, because it's an enforcement case and then an HLC case, we submitted the, the plans to the building department last week, and they've been distributed for the enforcement plan check. Uh, the, these plans were submitted? Yes, those plans. We, had, we haven't split up the plans. We just one set of plans. So you were given these plans. What I'm talking about is the light fixture. Yeah, it's not specified on the plans at this point. So it, they're what they're, that's what I'm saying. They're going to, you're going to get okay. a plan check correction back that says <laughs> get approval of the light fixture at yeah. HLC because it's not on here. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, I'll make a, I'll make as part of the motion to approve the uh, the uh, light fixture submitted in person and, and which will be on the tape for the record. But but and, and the applicant any, applicant to, the applicant to to reproduce the other picture on, on the final plan. We'll get the information on the plans. We'll do it as a plan check correction. I have one uh, quick comment answer. before we vote. Uh, the chain structure between the bollards. Yes. Uh, the new restaurant in the corner, Chapala and De La Guerra, has bollards and chains, and the chain is such a narrow gauge that it looks like if you touch it, it's going to all come apart. It's very important to choose a hefty, and I don't know how you personally, I don't know how you specify chain. I'm sure there's a way. Does the word anchor chain uh, uh, <laughs> That would be fine, yes. yes. <laughs> or um, he heavy gauge. Heavy possibly. gauge chain. One and a half inch <laughs> length by three eighths <laughs> inch. Didn't they vote? 
Three no comment. This poor rubber band is trapped there. <laughs> okay, that's right. All, right. So All in favor of the motion for approval is submitted uh, with... Wait, can I just add one little item to that motion, and that is that the light fixtures comply to the lighting, the EPV ordinance. lighting ordinance. Correct. Okay. just want to state that for the record. And the signage is to be approved by the signing committee. All in okay. favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Mr. Chair, Opposed? pardon me. Finish voting. Susan. Oh. Oh. Don't get it. Hey, Mr. Go. Chair, if, if it does not include the approval of the light fixtures, should I put that under commission comments, that the light fixtures that were reviewed today were acceptable to the commission? Yes. Only as a uh, commission comment. We understand they're going to be different sizes, different shapes, types, but hanging and very similar to the... And the comment that was made regarding the compliance okay. of the lights fixtures to, I believe, the ordinance, is that what was mentioned? The lights need to comply with the Yeah, the ordinance. Yes, they do. The so lighting part ordinance. Of the, um, of the motion comments or part of the commission comments? No, it's a requirement of part of the motion, essentially. So, it was discussed and so agreed upon by Mr. Wittaw, the architect. Okay, thank you. To review the lighting ordinance and comply. Thank you. Okay. We'll do that. Thank you. Thank you very much for your input. Uh, very helpful. Yeah. To uh, hefty chain. Yeah, hefty, hefty heavy chain. Yeah, uh, heavy gauge. Uh, okay, so thank you. And, and okay, and you're going to send us step down from this item. Uh, okay, very good. Apparently, this is a major thing. Uh, do we, is this mine or yours? Or? We that's yours. We have ours. And don't forget, don't forget your anchor chain. Yeah, that's right. We are some chain. Are you fresh No. No. You want to pull it down? Yes. <laughs> well, Brian, they're in a good mood now, so. <laughs> don't, don't waste it. Don't waste it. Don't squander these good, these good moments. <laughs> Hey, what's that one in Okay, item number nine. Our final item is uh, 318 State Street. Would you both introduce your, all three of you introduce yourselves, please? Um, Brian Cornell, Peter Lewis to my left, Phil so Suiting to my right. Um, speaking of Moorish, this is the lovely little Moorish building that was the Bothine Helping Fund project. Um, Alex is, is going to be submitting, she's already done a historic resources report on this and is currently in process with what, what we're proposing here. Um, you know that you, you've seen a project on this before. This is basically a new project and proposes to just leave the building as it is, uh, but to create a new parking lot in the back basically for the tenants um, that occupy it. As you know, well, I guess you can see it here in this existing um, yeah, yeah, this is a good one. So all these houses from this aerial photograph have been demolished. They were actually condemned by the building department, but the parking area for all practical purposes right now for this um, close to 50,000, 40,000 square foot building um, is in this area here. So what um, Peter is trying to do is to get a viable parking lot built in off Anacapa to serve this large building. So that's what this proposal is. So what it really involves is currently these are all for the most part vacant. There is, it's not showing up here on our, well here it is. There is an existing building um, that is to be demolished and I can, let me go through the photos for you. This of course is the, the um, end of Anacapa, so that's the little cul-de-sac with the planter in the middle. This is the little freestanding building that would be demolished as part of this project. You can kind of get a sense of what's there now from where those houses were removed. This is a photograph 
of the back side, this property line here, and then you can also see this little gap that is there. Um, and of course I have photos of the existing rear facade. This is a photograph of the existing building that is currently fronting onto the freeway. And you all are sort of familiar with that view. This isn't, there are probably better shots I could have given you, but that basically is what you see from the freeway. So these windows are the windows that are along this side. So we actually are providing for the possibility that there could be large truck access into that loading door that you see here. And, you know, beyond that, I think it really is a, a landscape problem um, as far as the solution for this site. You can see here we just conceptually have given an idea of what we are proposing. There's not a lot of change to this facade other than just cleaning up the main entry doors. Um, these are ex these are existing these are existing windows. That's a new entry. Line. That would be new. This is existing but would be cleaned up. So I think with that I should have Phil go ahead and if you want Phil. I'll trade places with you Phil yeah. and you can just you can just use that one there. So this is mostly a parking lot problem, landscape problem, and we're quite fortunate actually to have some um, large planters here at the end caps and even some planters there um, amongst the um, parking bays. Um, there is a uh, rather large existing um, Phoenix Canariensis here. We'll supplement that with um, some Tristania. But then here in um, this large area, we're going to do some um, large skyline trees like the um, California sycamore. Um, or possibility of the um, California live oak. Um, I'm leaning more towards the sycamore. Um, amongst the um, parking bays here, we're thinking of something uh, with some canopy, um, like the Chilcalpa uh, coloritaria or the Melaleuca. Um, all of these planters here, including these, are acting as um, filtration for the stormwater. Um, so the water runs from um, here down to here and then across and then out through there. So it gets a chance to all be filtered before it enters into the storm drain. That's it. Pretty simple. But it's, a, I think, a very generous landscape, uh, landscape parking lot. Commissioner Sharp. Um, if I'm reading this right, is this is all parking lot? Is this the this year? No, that, that that's a building. No, that's a building. That's a building, building yeah. Lot. That's yeah. There's a dentist office here. Right. The staples right. across and the street. And the parking lot is maybe a quarter of that. Or, okay. So that, is that? It's not given, part of the project. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, and that. Hi, Peter. You know, this used to be one. This was all one building that then got um, subdivided back in the probably the late 30s, early 40s, and when when Signal Oil built on the corner. So that is actually the the portion that is what we sort of know as the Work Inc. building is on that parcel. Any other questions? I have a question. Mm -hmm. Is this uh, a curve changes or is it uh, the same? I mean, are you touching this, this area? Because there's a parking lot here. Yeah. Right? That's Where? just paving. Oh, it, That's just paving. There is no, there are no planters so you're, there. You're, you're building this. Right? Correct. Okay. Correct. Another question. Yeah, this is a new, a new window here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Suggested new windows. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's actually existing doors that we're going to change to window. windows. Okay. And why being aware of that? How come this one is, so, is taller than the others? Is that any? Just because it's an existing opening. Existing I, I mean, we could, I suppose, we could lower it, but but you know, right now this is the, uh, this is brick, which you know the intent is to try to maintain that. You could also put awnings over here to just two windows. To we could, yes. I mean, it actually has, it's interesting, it has an awning now, which it, 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 it musical chairs, we, it has an awning now. I think we can probably find the photograph that goes along with that, that just covers this electrical panel. So we were going to clean up the roof of that and just turn that into to windows but you know it's possible we could keep that we just thought the awnings would help 
be a simple way to announce the front doors or the rear doors. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, thank you. Okay, we have one request to speak form from Mr. DeForest. Kill him? Yeah. Good afternoon. This, this project, we have some questions. I need to be clear and I need to report to the Pearl Trace Society that the plans for this building that were presented a few years ago now that would that this would be converted to a huge multi-story structure have been scrapped and that that's not no longer on the table which I highly approve of uh, the second question is this this the Moorish facade on State Street is to remain. I mean, that's not part of what you're asking. You're just asking for the uh, to add a parking lot to the rear of the structure. Is that is that what this entails? And also possibly clean up the uh, or uh, if that's the correct word, the uh, existing. Uh, uh, garage showroom por garage portion of the what was once a automobile showroom the shop part of the automobile showroom and then what does the existing 2000 building need any kind of historic structures report or anything what is it I'd that hasn't been made apparent to me, but I guess I should go down and look. Thank you very much. Mr. Jacoby, can you uh, enlighten us there? Actually, I believe he said that Alex Cole is preparing a report. An addendum to the addendum original to the report. report. Yeah. Originally, um, I remember this project was quite large, and it did have a lot of clearing that was going to occur in the back anyway for the... And we're going to put what, what townhouses or something back there. Now it's going to be parking, so uh, we'll have to wait for Alex's addendum report to come in to, to weigh in on what, what we're dealing with. Okay, Mr. Chair, I can clarify. I mean, we're, we, that that project certainly is not on this table. It is. It still lives out there. It's actually sitting in in the city process, but this is essentially a an alternative to that project is what this is and and obviously if we can if we're successful with this then the building will remain as is with just the minor alterations and and um, Kellum is correct that we're not doing anything nothing in in terms of what we're proposing today is affecting the front facade and Thank mr. You. and mr. chair um, they've also been requested to provide a uh, addendum letter report for the archaeological uh, okay. aspect of the project. So this is here for comments only, I assume, and con other concerns that we may have. Mr. Schmidt. Mr. Drew. Uh, <coughs> um, is that building that's going to be removed? It, we're not. If we accept this this report. We're not okaying at dis destruction of a building before uh, Alexander Cole's report comes in. Okay. And I think that's the old, uh, it's a car painting place right Correct. now. Correct. Yeah. Thank you. Do you know the date of that? That's fairly it's recent. Fairly new. Yeah. It's a fairly recent yeah. building. Thank you. Questions? Any other questions? Yeah. Robert. For the landscape architect. Mm hmm. Um, okay, so uh, there's going to be some overhang of the planter situation. Generally, what kind of plants are you choosing for the where the fender overhangs the the parking stalls? Where the bumper overhangs the parking yeah. stalls? Um, well, we're probably going to have to have wheel stops, not just a curb because wheel stops. Okay. Yeah, because the curb is going to be a flush curb so that the water can get into the swale drainage. Right. So okay. I figured it's more important to have. Um, the drainage filtered than it is to not have 
wheel stops. So there, there will be wheel stops. Therefore, the problem of bumper overhang really goes away. Okay. Any other questions? Comments? It's beautiful. <laughs> You just can't help yourself, uh, can I, you? I, I just. Next member, we allow you to. Thank you. <laughs> really, <laughs> Mr. Chair? This is, this is a lot of stuff, but I'd like to comment that I appreciate the fact that they're coming forward with this sort of mothballing project, if you will. Even though the other project still looms and may happen, and all this could change, at least we've got something. We're taking what's a really ugly uh, alley situation back there and making something nice out of it. You know, in, in the meantime, and if this, if the other project never happens, at least we've got something nice that's come of it. So I wish some of these other projects that they, you know, demolish a building and then we don't get a project there and there's nothing we would take take a look at this and maybe we can get more of this type of thing around the city. Yeah, yeah. Got the motion? <laughs> <laughs> so far we've had two people who aren't members make their comments. <laughs> can I can I chime in? No. Or <laughs> Peter. Just a couple things. Is I, I think I think parking stops are in in order. Okay. Uh, I also think that um, uh, you should um, stay away from the Melaleuca in, in this project. I think um, I think the sycamores would be really great with the Chitalpa or the um, Culvert area, where you've chosen those. So, um, I, I would also the comment I also want to make is you should include one oak out of that uh, mix. It, it it's a nice dark evergreen backdrop, and um, I, I really appreciate the the um, plant palette he's chosen. It's, it's drought tolerant. It's relatively low and hardy. Uh, I would also s suggest you study, you know, if, if you haven't already, the Berkeley sedge is, sedge is a very nice care, uh, sedge or Carex plant. And these are minor comments, but uh, anyway, I would just just avoid that um, Melaleuca for the center of the parking lot. Thank you. And I also appreciate the uh, the, the owner and uh, the the team. Um, really adding some uh, landscape in a really nice way to, to a parking lot. I think it's pretty well thought out, and, and I appreciate that. We all appreciate uh, more landscaping. So we can take action. The continuance? Yeah. Any other uh, yes, I would positive just, comments? Yes. Oh, I can't have a negative comment. No. <laughs> No, no. One. I, I, for one, appreciate this also. I think this is going to help that area, which is really a little stepchild end of the end of the street there. Mr. Chair, I just wanted to let the applicants know that the set of the plans were routed to creeks, and I have not gotten any comments back from them yet. Okay. okay. We'll get those reports done and get back to you as soon as we can. Good. I guess indefinite, you know, because I don't know what Alex is, obviously, her schedule is at this point, but so we'll, Could you we know. Have a motion for an indefinite continuance for this project. Is there a second? Second. second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. I ran Thank into uh, Judy. She used to work for you. Oh, years, years ago. She's like, yeah, she's like a hospital. Rennick. Yeah, yeah. Yes, really? Yeah. She said to say hi. That's funny. I was at the AIA convention and went to a, yeah, went to a, a Cal Poly reunion thing and we were just ch talking. She said, oh, you know, don't try. Oh, my God. She said very nice things about you. Well, with that, we will adjourn the meeting, uh, giving uh, the tribute and our condolences to uh, Alex Cole, oldest son Luke. Yes. Oh, I see. Yes, indeed. Then I just need one. Meeting is adjourned.